you're experiencing some strange playback issues or an array of colors across your timeline, well then you probably need to know about rendering in Adobe Premiere Pro and how to do it. If frames are being skipped, effects or transitions aren't working, or your project just grinds to a halt when it hits a red line above your timeline, well, that means your project needs rendering. Rendering is a workflow that allows you to play back at full speed and quality, but it just takes just a little bit of time to do. But rendering in Premiere Pro is not only simple to do, it's a good, good habit for editors to start to get into. So let's take a look at how we do that right now. When you import media into a project, Premiere Pro doesn't just take that and copy it like some other NLEs do. It actually references it directly from its stored location, which is what makes Premiere Pro so easy to get started with in the first place. You can literally take anything from any storage whatsoever, throw it on your timeline and get editing. Amazing. This makes project file sizes small and manageable and that's great, but there's also a downside to Premiere Pro Aww. in that it's really then dependent on your computer hardware specs, the media type you're trying to give it, like the, the resolution and the codec, and to whether it will be able to play that back in real time. And this is where you can start to see some lagging during playback. Once you start throwing transitions and effects into the mix, Premiere Pro can have a real tough time trying to edit and play back in real time, especially if you're working on older hardware, if you're trying to view a really high resolution clip like 8K on older hardware, it's just not gonna be able to do that and you're gonna fall into difficulty. Mm. Rendering part or all of your timeline in Premiere Pro means that you are asking it to take that information on the timeline and in the background, render that part of your timeline and this will create what is known as a preview file. Premiere Pro can then use that preview file to play back with and not have to reference the original media at all. It's using a pre-rendered piece of video so that it can play back in real time. And it will play back this version of your timeline, the rendered preview file, every single time that you click play over that particular part of your timeline, unless you make any changes, unless you nest it, unless you add an effect to it, if you make any changes, you'll need to re-render to make that preview file again. So what on earth are those colors at the top of the timeline? You might have noticed that when you add a clip to the timeline, there might be a color that appears above it. It might be yellow, it might be red, there might be no color, it could be green, what on earth is that all about? Well, those colors actually symbolize how accurately Premiere Pro thinks it can play back that clip in your timeline. So no color means that there is no associated rendered preview file that Premiere Pro is using to play back that part of your timeline. It thinks that whatever codec or media type that you have on there is simple enough for it to play back in real time, so there's no issues. The better the specs of your hardware, the more often you are to not see any colors above your timeline. Yellow is kind of similar to no color. Actually, think of like this as like a traffic light system. No, no lights, you never see no lights, do you? But that is a good thing. Yellow is kind of amber, there's a bit of a warning. So yellow is that no preview file has been rendered by Premiere Pro yet, but it believes that it can play it back in real time without too much of an issue. You might have to see on that one because sometimes a yellow definitely does stutter, but Premiere Pro believes it can do the job. Red, that's a bad sign. Red's not a good sign. Red means that it can't play it back at full speed whatsoever. If you try to play a clip that has red above it in the timeline, it's gonna grind to a halt because there's just too much going on that it cannot process at that speed. Maybe it's the clip itself, maybe it's too high a res, maybe it's the codec, maybe it's an effect or transition that you've got on top of it. It just does not like it and you won't be able to play it back at full speed. So rendering is therefore advised for red sections of your timeline. So that just leaves us with green and green in the traffic light means go and green in Premiere Pro also means go because that means it has a preview file. You've already rendered that section of the timeline and it can play it with no problems whatsoever. How to render in Premiere Pro? Well, rendering is a habit that you should definitely start to get used to as an editor and use it in opportune moments when you go for a coffee break or you go on your lunch break or you just step away from your computer for whatever reason. Hit the render and you can come back and preview that part of your timeline without having to wait and sit there to do it. Rendering, good habit, do it. Then you can really start to speed up your workflow, work smarter, not harder, because that's what we're all about at DigiPro Tips. In fact, if you are delivering your file in a high delivery format at the end of this, you could actually save yourself a bunch of time by using smart rendering. But more on that in a minute. Before you render, you need to define the area of your timeline that you want to render. It's no use rendering all of your timeline every single time because that is a waste of time. That's a lot of times. But 
There are easy ways to define your area that you want to render, and I'll show you them right now. The first is to define your area with an in and out. Everybody knows in and out. Well, maybe you don't know in and out, but get to know in and out. In your timeline, move your playhead to wherever you want to mark your in point and press I on the keyboard. That goes for Windows or Mac. For the out point, you do the kind of the opposite. You drag it to the end of your timeline and you mark O on your keyboard, and that will mark your in and your out point. Easy. That will then render that section once I tell you how to do that. The next is to render with a selection box. So you can actually drag a box over a portion of your timeline and it will select those clips inside of it. Or you can go and click on clips individually to highlight just those clips that you want to render. Now it's time to render your defined area. And to do that, simply go to sequence at the top of Premiere Pro, and then you'll see four options for rendering right there. The first is render effects in to out. And this does exactly what it says on the tin. It renders all of the effects that you have in your defined area and just the effects alone. Nothing else will be rendered. But sometimes that's all you need. If you have a bunch of yellow and a little bit of red above each effect, you can just use render effects into out and then you'll be able to play back your timeline at full speed and quality. You can also do this at any time by hitting return on your keyboard and that will render any specific red sections in your timeline. It won't render any yellow, but it can be a handy little tool if you just need to render those little bits of red and play back your timeline. Render into out. This is the one that you are probably going to use the most because this is where you have defined with an in and an out point and you just want that portion of your timeline rendered and it will render everything in there. Your clips and your effects will both be rendered. It won't render any audio though. Render selection. That's going to render that selection box of clips that we chose, the ones that we command clicked, whatever ones that you highlighted that aren't it necessarily in an in and out area, render selection will render those ones that you've selected, which is really handy when there's a particular clip or a little sequence of clips that are just being, you know, you know, render audio does exactly what it says on the tin. When you choose any of the options above, it doesn't actually render the audio underneath. But if you have a heavy mix, you might want to render the audio to help speed along that playback. And by clicking render audio, it will do just that. When you're rendering, you'll notice that the status bar doesn't move along fluidly, it jumps. And there is a reason for that, it's because Premiere Pro in the background is rendering every single frame individually and it will only update the status bar once it is rendered the last frame in a clip or effect. You'll see the frame count going up, but the percentage and that blue bar, that will only go up after every last clip frame or effect. In fact, you'll be able to see the bits that Premiere Pro has rendered already because as it's going along in the background, you might be able to see that it's part making parts of your timeline green and that means that there are now preview files associated with that part of the timeline and it's doing it as it's rendering. Okay, these are some of the best practices for rendering and can really help you in your workflow. And one of the first ones is to use an SSD, solid state drive. Why? Because it gives you the fastest access to your media. It means that Premiere Pro doesn't have to work from an old mechanical drive like a HDD. A SSD will give you faster access to your media and therefore Premiere Pro can use that faster access to play back in real time rather than having to pull from old media or do rendering to get, make a preview file. As well as using the SSD, make sure your media is separate from where your project is saved. That can actually help with the read write operations of your computer to make your editing a little bit faster. Render little and often make it a habit render as much as you save you know you hit that control s all the time don't make a schoolboy error and render all the time it just saves you so much time especially if you're going to use smart delivery having said that render only what you need rendering your whole timeline every single time is a waste of time if you accidentally start to render your whole time it's not the end of the world because you can just hit cancel at any point use smart rendering in your final export to save substantial amounts of time but i'll talk to you about that in a minute now you know why you need to render and how to do it, you should have no more problems playing back in your timeline. And you'll also start to find that your editing proficiency starts to improve when using this workflow, which means you have more time to be creative or to deliver that project faster by working smarter and not harder. So what is smart rendering? I hear you ask because I've been mentioning it and mentioning it and mentioning it. Well, smart rendering is a way for you to use your pre-rendered preview files in your final delivery. That's right. You don't have to export those sections anymore. They're already done for you. And to find out how to do it, click here.